trap, welcome, welcome to the trap. Welcome to the trap, welcome, welcome to the trap. Welcome to the trap, welcome, welcome to the trap. Let's go. Zen, trap, zen, trap, zen, trap, zen, trap. Protect your peace, protect your energy. Welcome back to the Zen Trap. I'm one of your two hosts, Yogi LG. Zen P. Hey, we got a fantastic Zen Trap perspective for you today. A ZTP. We coming at you hot with some good stuff. What we got? We actually got a video review for you today. It's a Hot 97 interview. They actually interviewed somebody that we've been semi-following, just seeing on some random YouTube videos. He is a Indian mystique. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I might butcher some stuff, even his name, but his name is Sadguru. That's it. Sadguru, something like that. So uh, just he, as a as a mystique, he just has like, I guess, like wisdom and knowledge that he's acquired and uh, just almost gives you like advice. I don't even know what to compare a mystique to, but uh, he just be dropping bars all the time and just gives really good advice. So I try not to look too much into it. All right, so who would you recommend this video to? I would recommend this uh, video to anybody trying to learn who Sat Guru is. This would be a great yeah. starter video, something very chill, something very quick. Um, I think he does a good job explaining who he is better than I could do. So uh, that's who I would recommend to. How about you? I literally, you took the words out of my mouth. Anybody that's like, i seen this guy somewhere, but I don't know what his story is. What, what's up with him? How did he start? What What is he doing? What's his purpose? Um, this is a perfect video because, I mean, obviously it's a hot 97 interview, so it's kind of chill, laid back, and it's just him telling kind of how he got started. Um, so definitely if you, you looking to kind of see what, what this guy is about, or if you're just looking for somebody who I, I personally, I don't know him personally, but I, it seems as though he's found extreme and in, internal peace. So if you're looking for somebody to shadow or follow that has found peace, um, he may be a very good start. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, how would you describe this uh, interview to somebody who's never seen it? Uh, it's definitely like kind of said like his startup story, but absolutely uh, focused on like what what his purpose is, kind of like what his purpose is in life. So, I think um, I would describe it as kind of him describing why he's doing what he's doing and how he got started and and even even some tips on how you could follow and he also started talking about soil and some other good stuff so um if you into that too that that's kind of part of it as well how would you describe it yeah i think i would lean more on just like the soil thing i think yeah. if he didn't have that like soil message he wouldn't even be doing interviews like that but that's just my opinion like I said, if, if you've never seen it, I think he does a good job just trying to get a quick explanation of, like, who he is, what he's been doing. And I think he tries to keep the focus on what he, the, the message he's trying to give in, in the video. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. What was your favorite bar? What did he give you? I know Ooh. he dropped a dime on you. Uh, let's see. Favorite bar? Oh, the human experience only happens within you. That Thanks. is bars. So it's just like, to me, that just means everybody's experience is different. Everybody's story is different. Everybody's experience in any kind of situation. You could think this shirt I got on is ugly. Like, I don't, I hate this shirt. It's too small. Everybody else around me ain't even looking at my shirt like that. Ain't thinking twice about my shirt, but I'm over here tripping out and sweating. My human experience can be so different night and day from anybody else because of feelings, whatever, unlimited things. So I thought that was a crazy bar. Oh, yeah. Definitely a bar. Feel that. Um, what my, about you? My favorite bar was probably, he said something, and this is not a quote, but close to a quote, you can't go picking mangoes from the ground. Um, and basically what he's saying in that quote to me is just that things aren't going to be like easy and sweet and you can just pick them up like boom. There it is. Um, you kind of have to spend some time. So the subject matter he was talking about was just kind of finding that internal peace. And they had asked him, like, how did, how did you do that? And he was like, well, for everybody, it's not easy. So everybody is not just going to be as simple as that. Um, but for some people, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But it is everybody's capable. So I thought that was a bar for sure. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Everybody's capable. I think another bar was um, create comfort versus happiness. 
So it's like saying if you keep trying to create this perfect, happy, chasing this something, or you're creating this item, experience or something, and you're creating it just to be happy, then you might not find it. You're probably not going to find it there. It's like you're looking outward for happiness, and it's probably within you the whole time. But if you go out, you can create some stuff to be comfortable. Like you can be comfortable with your feelings and how you feel and stuff. That's something you got to find within. So that was a bar to me. Absolutely. Um, I, he had a little portion in there, and this may be jumping ahead, but when he started talking about him, um, like his first time, I guess, meditating, I would say, mm-hmm. and how he thought he was sitting there for like minutes and he was sitting there for hours, and he just like woke up and felt so clear and like everything was so different. Do, I got a question. Do you believe in that type of experience? Do you feel like that could happen to everybody? Yeah. Something similar to that? Yeah, I think that's possible. I think you can meditate. I think people lose track of time all the time. So, yeah, I think you Not just focus. the track of time, but, like, it was enlightening. Like, he was, he, he almost, like, he said it, if, like, he was, had so many thoughts and so many questions that followed him around like a dark cloud. And then eventually he received, like, this moment of just clarity, right? Do you feel like that? So, again, this kind of hops on, like, um, when they were talking about, how it's not going to come easy for everybody. Like it may be different. Some people kind of have it within them where they can just find this place of peace and clarity. And then some people have to work at it. But do you feel like everybody can have a, a moment where it's like, oh, this is clear? Like, are, yeah. Is it possible? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just asking. Uh, what was your favorite section or chapter, I guess? Or do you got some more bars? My bad. No, nah, no more bars. I guess my favorite was that your favorite section? That was my favorite section. Okay. I mean, the soul section was really good too. Just he like him just saying like, you could eat an orange today and you would need to, or you would need to eat eight oranges today versus a hundred years ago or something. You could eat one orange to get that same nu- nutrients, like yeah. stuff like that was like just really yeah, just really good. What about you? My favorite section was when he was talking about uh, inner engineering. Mm. He was explaining how, I guess, they offer some kind of course where um, everybody has a manual for how to work like tools and how to work all of this other stuff. But the human body is still, even with all we know about it, has unlimited potential, unlimited like discovery. But nobody's taught, you know, how you should work your body like if you should fast or things you should do to help with your mood or just different things you can look inside for to help literally change how you view and how your perspective and your reality is. So just talking about almost like a self-help, self-awareness course. And I thought that was like dope. I don't know what's in it. I'm sure it deals with a lot of meditating, dieting and different exercises and stuff probably help with your mind and stuff. But I think that's like super dope. Yeah, that was a really good section. He was, it was funny cause he was like, yeah, all this is engineering. The dude was like, like these wires and stuff. He was like, yeah, it's engineering. He like, oh, okay, yeah, engineer. Yeah, because <laughs> people look at like simple stuff and think it's not engineering. He like this building we in is civil engineering, but inner engineering is just a concept I've never even heard of. So that's that was pretty dope. I'm sure it's dope. Yeah, I liked in that section where he was talking how like um, what keeps us, I get what makes us different from animals is how we function consciously versus instinctively like Mm -hmm. instead of us uh reacting on our instincts we take the time to actually analyze stuff we can actually withhold we have discipline and and like we you know our brains are just that uh evolved and then going into like uh how when we're little we don't have to try and find happiness or create happiness we're just like happy all the time finding stuff to do and all of that stuff And then the equation gets reversed as we get older because we start identifying with with things like this is mine. So we start losing control. And it's just it's it's crazy how like in your most simple form, like that's when you're the most happy. Yeah. What do you think um, besides like I mean, I think the obvious is pressures of like life and like maintaining our lifestyle. But outside of that, what do you think separates us from our child self? Uh, Society society and cultural mm. upbringing and pressure so uh somebody could be raised down the street from you and have a totally different experience than you do living in the same city and stuff so i think like just the rules and the society because like before technology like if you was in a community even like 30 minutes away an hour away you could have a completely different upbringing experience and all of that stuff and even with jail like you can go to jail and be 
locked in there for a year or two and come out a completely different person. Yeah. So I think it's all in your community and your upbringing and stuff. Just kind of. I mean, I think yeah, I think that's a big part of it. Honestly, I don't really know. Like I. I feel like I try to reflect, and this is maybe people don't do this, but I do. I try to reflect on, like, how I was when I was eight years old. Like, what do I remember that? What was I thinking about? What was I doing? What was I, what did I enjoy? And, like, what pulled me away from that? And, honestly, it is a huge part of just upbringing. Like, people just put this, or I guess community, environment, whatever, they just put this stigma on you of you should be like this at this age. All, okay, all those things have passed away, and maybe it's even religious too, because the Bible says something like, uh, "When I when I was a child, I walked like a child. I something 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 yeah, as a child. child. But when I was a when you know when I became a man, I left my childish ways and all that other stuff. So maybe it's sometimes religious. I think. Um, yeah, but all of that the, the Bible that's if yeah, you believe in the Bible. All true, that. true. So all your environment and stuff, I feel like it kind of just snatches that part of you away just based off of cultural perspective it's all choices though right yeah yeah but i mean when you when you that age you you so like what do i want to say green kind of like wet behind it like you don't really you just following the path like you hoping that like what my mom is telling me and what my uncle my favorite cousin whatever whatever they're telling me i hope that it's guiding me in the right direction and they seem to be doing okay so i guess i'm gonna just follow them but yeah, not but knowing. I, I feel like everybody has a point, right? Because I can ask you right now. At what point did you know that everything grown ups were telling you wasn't true? <sighs> when was that for you? Ooh. Uh, like little stuff or like big stuff? Either one. Where where like the moment where you knew. You knew that like I can't believe uh, everything everybody tell me now. I hate to put her out there like this, but uh my sister I just watched my sister be lying to people. I was oh, like, okay. Oh How my god. I was probably like seven. Okay. Seven. And I was yeah. just like, she is not telling the truth. So I assume, this is what I'm getting at. Okay. I assume as you progress and you see more and more evidence of that, mm -hmm. now you have a choice, right? Yeah. I mean, my bad. Um, yeah, I think you have a choice, but you, uh, yeah, you got a choice. That's where you're you being, just, you're being you, complacent now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I think honestly at those ages, I'm wondering like, is it just my sister? Is my mama capable of lying? I didn't think my mama... I didn't think my mama did nothing wrong until I was probably about right. 15. How old were you when you... 15. 15. 15. That's what I'm saying. But as you progress... Yeah. Now that you have all that information given to you... And yeah. You, you realize with examples and stuff, you have a choice to be complacent or not, right? Yeah. You got a choice you to kind of... choose kinda, whether you want to be a part of this community, this... This environment, you want to live life this way. I think yeah. the more technology evolves too, it's like... That's more of you still choosing to be complacent because now even with like Facebook and all this other stuff, virtual, you can you can build a community wherever almost now. Yeah. Which is dangerous with that too, but still like you can find people similar that have similar interests as you. Yeah. And I, honestly I think just the pressures of going against the grain start to kind of like put you in this box of all right, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, this is how I'm supposed to be living, this is what I'm supposed to be thinking. This what like this how I'm supposed to plan. This how I'm supposed to vacation. Like, I like people don't understand the concept of of like, oh, you about to quit your job? What for what? Like, just things of that sort. Like, just become you just get put in this box. But it's definitely a choice. So I agree with you a thousand percent. Sorry, I got I got carried away. Um, You're do you have a thing. story in your life that relates? Story in my life that relates to this video. Uh, I probably relate similar to what, like, the weird, I, I, I'll call it weird, because I don't hear nobody else talk like that, so I'll call it unique. unique. The unique childhood story he talked about where he was, like, staring for a long time and stuff and focusing and in a deep thought. I definitely have had moments like that when I was, like, little or even now still, like, you know, clearly when I have a brain pause or something, it's like, um... Staring at something and just thinking about like all the different perspectives and that's slightly overthinking, but just going into deep reflection and deep thought. Like, so yeah. I, I thought that was cool where you just start thinking about all this different stuff and then you realize it's not as complex. So you always get back to a simple answer and then I get frustrated about that. So then I just be like, oh, whatever. Like, it's yeah. so stupid. What about you? You got um, a story in your life that really? I think he had a, like right around that section, he was talking about how he had all these questions questions about life and like like 
I think I relate with that a lot just because um, I had a lot of questions growing up and even now still, I mean, I'm, I'm making my own, I'm, I'm making my own path more so now, but when I was younger, I had a lot of questions about what was purpose? What are we here for? Uh, like religion. And so I, I definitely feel like that story related to me just because it did feel like a black cloud. It felt like a, a huge piece of unknown. And it wasn't until I was able to kind of like start talking to some people around me that had more insight that kind of gave me the, the mind to think like, all right, this, yeah, we, we go through life and we work and we eat and we shop and we make friends. And we do all this shit, but like really the substance of who I am isn't going to be those things. Right. But it took me a minute to kind of get that because I had a whole bunch of questions like, all right, am I just supposed to be going through the emotions? Like, what am I supposed to be feeling? Like, how do I handle these emotions or these thoughts that I'm having? So that one definitely related to me for sure. I feel that. What can you take away from this interview right now? Um, and apply it to your life. Honestly, the soil thing made me like really think about how I move, right? How we move, like, of course, it makes you question your diet, what you eat, but also sure. like what you <laughs> what you doing for the universe. Like, I'm a big person. I don't litter. I hate littering. I try I try my best not to litter. Um, but that's something small that I've always thought about. Like, man, this stuff in the ground, like it's messing with everything. We trash the world. Like we have we have done some crazy shit to this earth that God has given us. So um it definitely made me think about like kinda how I move with that, with eating, uh, with what I put in the soil, even me being like cremated versus buried in the ground, like things of that sort. So, um, I'm going to apply that to my, to my life right now. I'm going to continue to not litter, but I think I also going to change some other things around me on, like just the environment and the earth and kind of trying to protect that more. Yeah. Yeah, I think same. I felt the same way hearing all that stuff, the same exact way. And then even more when he talked about how, like, if it does come true, like if we don't do anything and the soil does get to that point and we start having food shortages, how the world is just like. It's going to be crazy. Money, money don't matter now. If I can't eat, I'm go you, yeah. when you got to eat, it's, it's survival kind of, of the fittest, baby. Yeah, it's gonna look like movies. What's um, that? Uh, what's that? A uh, zombie show? The Walking Dead. It's gonna be like that. It's gonna be like that. Me ain't gonna be no zombies, uh, but yeah. that desert show. It's like a movie about people where like water is like hard to come by, Oof. not food. Water. Oof. So you can, like what? You can eat all you want. What? Well, you ain't got no water though. You gotta die. <laughs> Yeah, die. Dang, it's food everywhere. Chicken wings everywhere. Yo, I was just uh the cattle died in Kansas. Did you see that? I don't watch the news. No, I wasn't on the news, it was Instagram. But oh. ten thousand cattle died in Kansas from a heat wave. When I tell you it's just cows. They legs stiff in the air on the ground. Just I'm talking about they just stacking bodies they of cows. Huh? Yeah. Say that again? They turn into steaks. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you can. I mean, it's still good. I think it is. I hope they did. <laughs> I hope they repurpose. I thought the exact same thing. Like, I hope they repurpose it. Um, but I hope it ain't no like recall on beef in a minute because they got some cows been sitting out in the heat. I don't know if you can like get what? a heat stroke cow and kill it. Like, I always feel like you got to have fresh kills, right? No, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that about that. <laughs> if the chicken died of cancer, if the chicken died of the yeah, yeah. like so, my mama used to different. say like when they used to hunt and stuff. Well, my bro my uncles used to hunt. If it was just a, ra a dead rabbit over there, you don't want to eat that dead rabbit. You don't know what he died from. How long you been there? All that kind infected. of stuff. It, yeah, it could have some. It could be bad meat, but if you kill a rabbit, a live, good, well rabbit, you assume it's all good. You cook that up and eat it. Well, they know how them cows died. Yeah, that's true. So I, that's why I hope they repurposed it. But that's even another thing. Like, I just know that I took a whatever farm that was, whatever meat industry uses that farm in Kansas took a hit, and things like that. I imagine are going to continue to happen. Whether it's the environment, the soil, these like things like this are happening, and we eventually are going to definitely be in a food shortage. Start eating plants. Yeah, we definitely just keep eating mangoes water and watermelon. Around. Um, something I can take and apply right now. 
Oh, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, I got it now. Yeah. So he talked about his purpose. When he, I think I really mm-hmm. enjoyed how when he was talking about his purpose, because I've heard this on another show, mm-hmm. his purpose being something so far out there that he even still recognizes that he probably won't even get close to it. So he'll be a blissful failure. He's destined to be a blissful failure. Everybody, we, he knows he's going to die. We all know he's going to die. His purpose is something so far out there. Because I've seen somebody else say a quote that, like, people's issues isn't that they they are setting uh, uh, goals. Um, isn't issues with setting goals. It's that the goals that they set are too low. They keep setting goals that they know they can crush. Mm. Versus setting goals so far away that, like, Hey, if you aim like it's that bullshit like quote about like if you aim for the uh, shoot moon, for the stars, shoot land, for the stars on the clouds. land on the clouds, shoot for yeah. the moon, like aiming so far away that like you'll go past where you thought you could go just by aiming so far away. You aiming at such a so I thought that was cool that like I need to really have really like both sets. I need to have a purpose that like frightens me a little bit that like. It, that I desire is so out there that like when I in in pursuit of chasing it, even if I don't hit it, I'll accomplish some stuff that is beyond my wildest imagination. Like I want to try like that. Uh, That's what I, I can take from the video. I think he said in there his his purpose was to make the whole world ecstatic. Is yeah, that, that was his Something purpose. Like that. Yeah. So just for reference, that's far out there. <laughs> and yeah. he made that go to like twenty five or something. Yeah, like the uh, the dude that does the um, impact theory interviews mm-hmm. that we watch, his goal is to like be like the next Walt Disney or something. Mm. So it's something that's crazy out there. It's a good purpose. And he says he knows he might not ever be able to do it or probably can't do it or whatever, but he's working every day really hard as he can to be the next Walt Disney. That's what he's doing. That's what he's chasing. Yeah. That's what he's happy about. Everybody knows it. He keeps saying it. He's doing it. Hey, the worst that can happen is he can hit it. Hey, let's make a goal right now. I can't do that. Ah, come on, All right, man. Hey, start. Start us off then. All right, cool. Um, only reason I just want to clarify. The only reason I said I can't, I don't know myself well enough to do it. That's the only reason I'm saying it. What you mean? I don't. I haven't taken the time to think long enough. And I'm not saying you got to think long, think wrong. I believe in all that too. But I just, my first instinct reaction to that was I haven't thought enough to give you, like, an answer I'm, like, sure of. But it, I can give you an answer. If you, you give me an answer, I can give you an answer. I want to make the whole world feel safe. Okay. Okay. Emo- like, not, like, protect, like, physically safe, but, like, an emotional safe space. You want to make the whole world feel like an emotional safe space? Yep. Okay. Um, I want... I want everyone in the world, every person that's born to... uh, I want every person that's born to be fearless, confident and fearless. Dang. You want to help create that? Yeah. I want to help be a part of creating, making everyone that's born, everyone in the world be confident and and fearless in what they do. That's what's up. That's really good. Anything else for the people, man? Nah, see, I already questioned. I'd be like, man, there's some crazy motherfuckers out here. They confident <laughs> and fearless. They gonna tear some shit down. I don't know. So that was probably gonna change. But like as of hey, right now, hey. I want I want everyone to be confident in themselves. But that's scary as hell. To that's scary. Reason. That's scary. So we figured out. I just Bunch of little four year old boys running around. Basically, nah, I ain't scared of four year olds. I'm scared of the forty four. No, I'm talking about like, but four year olds are normally confident and fearless. Four, like four year old boys. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. grown ass people walk, yeah. running around like four year old boys. Which, yeah. Just be a weird world, man. Yeah, for sure. All right. This has been another ZTP Zen Trap perspective. Again, I want to get to host Yogi LG. Zen P. Hey, remember to protect your peace, protect your energy. It's the Zen Trap. We out. Zen Trap. We out. Welcome to the trap.